Hello everyone, welcome to Breakout, live coding using Pygame. Um, this is a video I just wanted to try today and see if I could do a little bit of Pygame. I don't know a lot about Pygame, but I'm going to do my best. Now I am not at home with my normal equipment, so you'll see weird artifacts like this. Very see my little OBS studio there. Um, so let me uh, pop over to my programming editor, which is Genie, uh, genie.org. It's free, it's open source, and cross-platform. And a quick shout out to my channel members, Kevin and Paul, who are Snake members. They have been on the channel for one month or more. And my invaders, who have been with the channel, uh, they stay there in their first month, uh, Jan, Mode, Kim Xiong, and Finesse. Thank you guys so much. Um, so what I want to do today is see if I can program kind of an old school breakout game using Pygame. Now, I have not done any Pygame ever since I did my side shooting games. Let me just show you what that looks like. And so this is something, you can check out the videos, there's three of them. I did these, oh. okay, wow, that's really loud, I forgot about that. So this was, this was what I did with that game, and it looks pretty cool, I'm pretty happy with that. Um, so I don't remember any of the Pi game stuff, to be honest. So I'm going to be using this as kind of a model, and then I also have my collision detection stuff over here. I think it's also in here, but I want to use some of the collision detection things. And this is something I often do when I'm programming something, especially something I'm not super familiar with, is to look at previous examples of things that I've done. And as you noticed earlier, I also have opened a couple windows. Here's the pygame.org docs, and something. the one thing I didn't really know how to do uh, for sure was how to draw a rectangle in Pygame. I found this on Geeks for Geeks. Again, nobody codes in a vacuum. I don't know everything, so I do do quite a lot of Googling. So yeah, so let's uh, see what we can get done here today in the time that I have. So basically, I'm just going to go ahead and copy some of this stuff. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and import Pygame, so I'm going to copy that over here. And what I want to do is I want to just kind of get my basic window up and running. So this is some of the stuff that you need to get uh, a window up and running. So I'm going to go ahead and just copy those things. And this isn't really a tutorial. It's more of just kind of hopefully enjoy watching me code. And I'm going to go ahead and make set this up to 1200 by 800. I think 800 by 600 is a little bit too small in this day and age. So I'm going to go ahead and call this, uh, yeah, Breakout. Breakout by Tokyo EdTech. And unfortunately, I can't do this live because I am out of town right now. I, the internet here is not that good. So yeah, when, when I live coded the uh, original program I was talking about, the side scroller, I got a lot of help from the viewers. So thank you so much. Again, I don't know everything. Um, everybody's learning. And so if somebody tells me something and then I use it in a later video and I don't give you credit, I do apologize. It just slips my mind. It's not personal. Um, so yeah, we got that. And let's see here. Okay, so we got create the screen. So I'm gonna copy that code over there. So basically I just wanna get that basic window up and running. And that's hopefully what we'll see here. Now there's a bunch of class stuff here. I may copy that later. Um, let's see here, font. We're not gonna be doing anything with that yet. Uh, we do need our main game loop. And I'll go ahead and copy that because I think we're definitely gonna need that. And again, I'm just kind of guessing here what I need. <laughs> so hopefully, okay, so we got render. So this is where we draw stuff. So screen.fill. So I'm going to copy that. And that's going to go into the while true loop. And you see here black is not defined because I didn't copy that section of the code. So let's go ahead and copy that. We'll definitely be using uh, black, white, and green. So I'll just go ahead and copy all of those colors. And Notice that they're in capital letters just because they are what we call constants. They don't change, so we keep them uh, in capital letters. It's just kind of a convention. You don't have to do it, but uh, if you don't, the other coders will make fun of you. Um, so render surface clock tick. Okay. And I think that's it. I think that's what we need. So this is hopefully... Uh, I'll put the flip to display. Hopefully this will give us a blank window and set the clock, the FPS, the frames per second. And so what this does is gives us 30 frames per second. So no matter what computer we're on, it should look the same. So I'm going to go ahead and run this and see what happens. Okay, well that was exactly what I wanted. So I have a blank screen 
And what was the exit key? Quit. Uh, does that mean just close this? Escape. Nope. Q? Nope. Okay. Okay. Well, that's okay. I can live with that. Um, you see I've got sys.exit there. I'm going to go ahead and import sys. It's got a little error. Uh, yeah. Okay. So here we go. Let's go ahead and create some of our objects on our screen. So we have a player. So again, I'm going back to my side scrolling shooter. So class player, create classes. Um, now this game was far, far more uh, complex. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and copy this part because this is really, I think, the only part I need for right now. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and create classes. Again, this is a bit more of an advanced tutorial. If you're not familiar with classes, check out my class uh, tutorial and there will be a link hopefully down below, if not, remind me. And so the player, I'm going to actually change this to paddle because the player is a paddle in this particular game. So dx. So the Paddle is going to start out at zero. I'm going to start it out at negative. Oh, that's right. Pi game. Pi game, the coordinates are a little bit different. So I'm going to just put that back. Let's run this real quick. So we got to think about this. So those of you who have seen my turtle module tutorials, you know that zero, zero is the center of the screen. However, in Pi game, this is zero, zero. This is positive x. And I think this is positive y. So remember, it's 1200 by 800. So that means we'll put it down here around 700. And so when we start the game, I think that's right. Now dx is the left and right speed. So when you start out, it doesn't move at all. So let's go ahead and create a render method for this. So we want to render the paddle. And since it's a class, we've got to use self. Now again, I don't remember quite how rendering works. And that's why I opened up this uh, Thing. I was looking for how to draw a rectangle because the paddle is a rectangle. And you can see here drawing a rectangle. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy that and pop that over into my own code. So it's pi game. I've imported pi game. That's good. Draw a rectangle. Surface is the screen. So I'm going to change that to screen, I think. The color is going to be white. Okay, and we define white up here. And it is a pi game dot rectangle. And this is 30, 30, 60, 60. I don't know what those mean. So, yeah, I don't know what that means. Let's go ahead and run that and see what happens. Oh, we got a render. So I'm going to go ahead and draw stuff. So draw the screen. I'm going to say render objects. So I'm going to say paddle dot render. And paddle is not defined. Okay, I created the class but did not create the object. So create game objects. So paddle equal again. If you don't know what classes are, this probably won't make a lot of sense. But uh, again, if you watch the video, it ex I think it explains it pretty well. Okay, so there is our paddle. So clearly. I drew a rectangle at 30, 30, down to 60, 60. So that is not what we want. Alrighty. So I'm going to just go ahead and say self dot width. We'll give the paddle width. Just for now, I'll make it 100. And self dot height equals 50. So when I draw this, the paddle, it's going to be at self dot x minus self dot width divided by 2. And then it's going to be at self dot y minus self dot height divided by 2. So that's the top left corner of my object. And the bottom right corner is going to be self dot x plus self dot width divided by 2. And self dot y plus self dot height divided by 2. Now I could have hard coded this, I could have put the numbers in there, but in case I need to change the width and height of the paddle, this should work. So let's try that. Okay, I see nothing. <laughs> That's a bad thing. Um, ah, okay. And it's giving me a little warning down here about divisions and things. I think I have to put 
2.0. Or maybe I gotta change this to integers, I'm not 100% sure. Uh, but anyway, that did not work, so let's see what's going on here. And the original one worked. X minus self dot width divided by two. Y is height plus width. Hmm. Now to me that should work, but it isn't. All right, well, I'm gonna let that go for now. Um, self x, self y, so zero. All right, let's just put, hmm, that should be right. Self width, self dot height. Now probably people watching at home probably already figured it out, but uh, you're really stressed out when I think people are watching me and I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> um, it's really darn annoying. All right. All right, so here's what I'm gonna do is I gotta try and figure out where I went wrong. So I mean, it was because of that warning. Uh, let's go ahead and let's see if I can fix that. Um, int int. It says it says it was working, so. And stuff like this that really annoys me when I'm working with libraries, because every library has like its own weird little quirks, and it's probably one of the reasons I stick to Turtle because I know all its quirks. Um, all right, and now I'm definitely annoyed. Uh, let's see. So the height, width, height. Let's, let's change that to a different number to see what happens. Okie dokie, lovely. Um, all right. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to the original code. And I'm just gonna put the numbers in. And I hate the uh, scrolling on this too. Sorry, it's morning and I'm annoyed. <laughs> so I, I usually I usually have a pretty easygoing attitude, but this is this type of stuff just annoys me to no freaking end. Um, oh, that's right. So it was 30, 30, 60, 60. All right, let's run that and see if that works. Unmatched. Let's try that again. Okay, that's fine. So, now I expect this should be zero minus one hertz. So that should be minus 50. There's the problem. Okay, I'm gonna undo. Everything I had was correct. God, I'm so annoyed right now. It's because x is not zero. It's because it's because the stupid coordinate system in Pi game. Sorry, it is a stupid coordinate system. So, we're starting it at width divided by, or this is gonna be, this is be 700. This is width divided by two. Point. Oh. <sighs> okay, it's a little big, <laughs> but we can fix that. Um, okay, so I'm guessing it's just that type of thing. I just need some extra parentheses, I don't know. Yeah, and this is like the really annoying thing about coding is when you're, you have something really stupid that just shouldn't be happening. Um, all right, self.width, self.height. Self.bar, self.height. All right. So quite working right, but uh, it's working a little better. And Yeah, I did not expect to spend 15 minutes drawing a freaking paddle. Um, but it's good to see this. It's, it's definitely something that happens quite often. Self x plus self width divided by two, that's right. I'll put point zero just in case, but I don't think it matters. Ah, okay. This is where, you know, 
people like me who don't like to read documentation, um, this 60 is not the bottom right coordinates. I should have just read this. Um, yeah, so I should have looked up what, what a rect object is. This is probably the top left, top, you know, top left, top, top. And this is probably the width. It's not the, the Y coordinate. So that would explain it. So then that would make this self.width. Just a guess, but that's probably what it is. And this should be self.height. Yeah, another unmatched thingy there. There you go. All right, so I'm not happy with the size of that. I think it should be a little smaller. So make the height smaller and make it a little bit wider on the screen. That's another good reason to use variables rather than hard coding everything. Okay, that looks like a paddle for the game. All right, so now I can move on and not be so upset about that. But you can see, it just gets frustrating. Um, so when people are frustrated when they code, my students in particular, uh, I can totally relate. But that is the process. Again, one option is to do what I did and to sit there and fumble. The other option is just go and read the documents. So you should probably read the documents. But uh, I've never been the type of person to read instructions very much. Okay, so finally we got a stupid paddle working. Now, I'm going to go back to my side shooter and try and figure out how I move things. Um, so you can see here, I have a left and right, I have some move methods. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and just kind of copy these because it kind of functions the same. Uh, there's some differences. And so I'm going to go back to my breakout program. Again, you might consider this cheating, you might consider this smart. Uh, I personally consider it pretty smart. Um, so. I'm just going to leave these numbers left and right. So dx, so dx is your left speed, dy, dx, dy would be your up and down speed. Now since the paddle doesn't move up and down, it just moves left to right, I can do that. Uh, I don't need to move x and y. So x equals x plus dx. Checking for border collisions. So now this should be x, not y. Uh, there is no... Again, it doesn't move up and down, so I don't need that for this particular problem. Now the left border is less than zero, but it's plus the width, self dot width, divided by two, try to put zero, uh, equals zero plus self dot width, divided by 2.0, Okay, so it will stop at the border. And then if it's greater than uh, the border, it's 1200 wide. So it's 1200 minus self dot width divided by 2.0. I'm just gonna copy that. Now I could hard code it, but if we end up changing some sizes and things, we don't wanna do that. Um, now, I need to be able to control the paddle so how does that work in Pygame? Again, I just don't remember how Pygame works at all. Um, ah, keyboard events. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and just copy this. This is a lot of, you know, again, this is something I do quite often in my uh, own games, is I just take stuff that I did and just reuse it. Okay, again, the player's not going up, so I don't need that. Player's not going down, I don't need that. Now the player is going left, so, oops, no, I need that, put that back. Okay, so I need this part, the event type, uh, this part I don't need. Um, just doing left and right. Again, I don't use Pygame very often, so I do forget these things. Okay, and it's not player, it is paddle. All right, so let's see if we can move the player. All righty, it's not working. Why is that? Okay, I'm gonna close that and reopen it and see what happens. All right, so save, let's run it. Okay, there's my paddle. 
and it is not moving left and right. So that's a bad sign. So, and the answer is, ah, I didn't call the move function. Um, so, update objects. So, paddle dot move. Okay, so, okay, so we got a moving paddle, wow. Now it's a little slow, I think, for this game, but uh, so let's double that speed up. So, okay, well, double. Well, let's leave it like that for now. Um, maybe we can speed it up later if we have to. I like it also be a power up thing if you want to change this into Arkanoid later. Uh, okay, so we've got a moving paddle. Now we need a ball. Now the ball is going to be a lot easier just because we already have a paddle. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and just basically copy the paddle class and make a ball class. Now, ball is going to have an x and y. It's going to have a dx. It's also going to be moving dy. And the ball will be much smaller. So we'll make it, I don't know, 40 by 40, uh, I don't know, 20 by 20. 20 by 20. Um, the ball doesn't have a left and right method because it just moves on its own. Uh, it does need to move in the x and y direction. So I'm going to put the movement y, y, and dy there. I will need to do something with collisions for the top and bottom. So I'm going to have to go ahead and deal with that. Now, in this particular game, you're gonna have different reactions based on whether it's the top or the bottom. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do Y. So, so this is the top of the screen and it's height, not width. So if it hits the top of the screen, the DY is going to reverse, basically. So it'll come back down at us. Now, if it goes off the bottom, ooh, I shouldn't, I shouldn't use 1200. I should use width and height. Um, oh God, I can fix that later. So I'm already way over, way behind. I do want to get a working game going. Uh, so basically, if it goes off the screen at the bottom, I'm just going to put it back in the center. Uh, so I'm going to say, self.x equals uh, width divided by 2.0 and self.y equals width divided by 2.0. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead, I guess since I'll make it this width, and this is the screen width, it's not the ball width. And so we're not using hard codes. Now zero is always gonna be left. Uh, so we don't have to worry about that one, but we do need to do the width for the right side. And I'm going to go ahead and do that up here as well. I should have done that initially. Um, width. All right, so let's, oh, and we got to give the ball, uh, when it starts out, we'll make the ball go uh, one, well, we'll make it go six and six. And that should move it up and to the right. Oh, no, it's going to move it down. Uh, because why it's negative on this one. Okay, so let's try this. Okay, now, again, I've created the class. <laughs> I haven't created the objects. So ball dot ball equals ball um, and ball dot move. Okay, I do not see a ball. Okay, so let's go up to the render method. Well, that should be working because that was all, I didn't render the ball. Um, and this is why I should just put everything into a list, and which I will do eventually, but there we go. Okay, well, that's not too bad. Okay, some things are working. <laughs> all right, so I forgot about that. So if the ball hits, so we gotta look at the ball. So if the ball hits the border, we got to reverse the dx. 
because it goes from positive to negative, times equals negative 1. And, and this should be height. All right, I think. Yeah, this should all be height. But that should be width. Okay, all right. It's very hard to code and talk at the same time. Self.dx times equals line 76. All right, there we go. Oh, it's starting there, but... Uh, okay, so the ball is bouncing, which is a good sign. And it does return to the center. And we got to do the collision with the paddle next. Okay. Alrighty. Uh, I'm going to call that a win for now. <laughs> right. um, I don't want the ball to start at there. I want the ball to start at height. Uh, divide by two point. I want to start in the middle of the screen, so let's try it one more time. Okay, so we always start going up and to the right, and it'll come off, and then it will keep going in the same direction. I can live with that. Alrighty. Booyah. Okay, so next up is we want to deal with the collision of the ball and the paddle. So we want the bounce off of the ball and paddle. So now, if I was using the built in sprite, uh, object that Pygame has, there's there's command built in that does this. And that's and that's probably what I should do eventually, but I don't know how to do that yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to steal my collision detection routine from my collision detection video. And in, if you haven't watched the collision detection video, I, I strongly recommend it. It's really, really helpful to understand how collision detection works. And so I'm not going to explain what I'm going to do here, but this is what I'm going to be using. And it's called Access Align Bounding Box Collision. It's going to work perfectly in this particular program just because um, everything's rectangular. So um, do I want to put it with the class or I just want to make it a separate thing? I'll put it in the class for now because it's probably better structure. So I'm going to go ahead and put this in here. Now you notice it's using the math module, so that means I gotta go up here and import math. Oops, import. Okay, I'm gonna come down to here, self x. Okay, great. I don't need to change anything. This is awesome. Um, so you can see here I'm using self x, other x, self y, other y, self width, other width. And these are the exact same things that I've already used uh, here. So. It's a good thing I'm pretty consistent with the way I code stuff because that makes my life easier. I'm going to plop this into the ball class as well just in case we need that. Um, and I'm going to leave it called AABB Collision just to be sure it's what it does. So here's what I want to do. So I'm going to move the objects and then I'm going to check for collisions. And for right now I only have one, the ball and the paddle. So if ball dot is AABB collision with the paddle. Say ball.dy times equals negative one. So what that should do is if the ball and the paddle collide, it should reverse the dy of the ball. Let's see what see how that works out for us. And if it reverses the dy, it should then go in the opposite direction. Oh my gosh, it works. Okay. Now I don't know what's going to happen if it hits an edge or anything like that. Oops. Oops, I missed. Okay. I'm pretty happy with that. That looks pretty good. Um, this is awesome. Okay. All right. So I think kind of it's it's funny the hardest part was drawing that stupid rectangle everything else is kind of coming together pretty nicely um, so the next thing is to draw some bricks um, so again I'm gonna be just I'm just gonna copy one of my classes and change it now bricks don't move they they do render so I do need the render method uh, they 
collision, I can use, I can put the collision method in there too. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and put, but I probably could just keep it in the ball class, but um, let's go ahead and just leave it there for now. It doesn't matter. Um, what I should have done was made a parent object and then everything else was a child of that, but I didn't. So my bad. Um, but that's what happens when you're just kind of coding off the cuff. Um, you know, things like that happen that don't need to happen. And like I said, so bricks don't move left or right. They don't move at all. They do render and they do collide with the ball. So I can leave that here. Actually, I'm gonna take it out. We don't need it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna use the ball because they, they're always gonna collide with the ball. So I don't wanna have extra code I don't need. Um, and let's see here. Brick. Okay, so brick. Now the brick, when we start it, we gotta put it somewhere. So I'm gonna actually make this a little bit different. So X com, I should have done this with the other ones as well, but I didn't. Um, again, this is what happens when you don't plan things out. Why? Um, bricks don't move. Um, so I can get rid of DX and DY. And they do have a width. So we've got to pick a number. Um, let's, I don't know, let's, let's make them 50 by 25. And each brick is going to have a color, self.color. Um, Ah, so equals, let's just make them all green for now, since that's the only other color I have, I think, up there defined, black and white and green. So I'll put self.color here. And I'm going to go ahead and just make one brick. Brick equals brick. And notice since I put the X and Y here, I got to put, I actually put it somewhere. Um, so screen is 1,200, so that's 600. So I'm going to put it at 700 and... In the middle somewhere, it will be 400. So 400. Let's try that. And again, down here, I got to do the same thing. I got to. Now, the brick doesn't move, so I don't need that. And if I do need to render it, let's see if it shows up. Okay, it does show up. Now, what I was hoping was that it would be right where the ball is going to be. So I'm going to move that over a little bit. So we got 650 and try that. No, it's not too high enough. So 300. So basically what I'm trying to do is I, I'm trying to check for a collision. Okay, that's close. I want the ball to hit it right as it comes out. So we see if it works or not. Okay, fantastic. So what should happen if there's a collision is that so let's go ahead and test that. So if ball dot is a b b collision with the brick, okay, the ball reverses direction. And what I'm just gonna do is I'm gonna just move the brick for now. Uh, we're actually gonna have to delete it later, but brick dot x equals, we'll put it way off the screen at like, you know, 12,000. Okay, so let's go ahead. Oh my gosh, it worked. All right, I think I can live with that. Um, okay, so it kind of works. Um, I'm pretty happy with this. Okay, so now the next thing I got to think about. Um, again, I know that the collisions aren't perfect. We may have to adjust those at some other point. But what I want to do is to basically create, like when I start the game up, I just want to create a ton of bricks. And so think about how I want to do this. Um, Okay, so I'm gonna make a list of bricks. Bricks equals that. And notice my naming here. This is bricks because it's a list of bricks. And I'm gonna say for y in range, and it starts at zero plus, so it's gonna start 25, range 25. And the screen is 1200 wide divided by 25, so that's 40. Is that right? Probably. So. 40, so, no, no, so 1200 minus 25 would be 1175. And I want bricks every 50. For X in range. All right, so that's that's the, that was wrong. That's, that's the X stuff. 25, 1175, and 50. The Y is, 
uh, from the top at zero, so they're 12 and a half high, I'll make it 25. I guess we'll do the same thing. We'll make bricks all the way down to, we're gonna do that. All the way down to, now I'll make, how many rows do we wanna make of bricks? We'll make six rows, so 25, 50, 6, 3, 75, 25. And again, this is something I'd have to play with the numbers if I was really uh, thinking this through. Um, so I'm going to say bricks dot append brick x comma y. Get rid of that, and down here, what I'm going to do is for brick in bricks. And I'm going to render all the bricks. Again, this is stuff I do in all my tutorials. Um, you know, so if you watch one of those, it is a bit more step by step rather than just kind of this live coding. Um, you'll see kind of what, I, what I'm doing and why. So next error, unmatched parenthesis in line 121. Oops, extra parenthesis, which I don't need. Okay. All right. Oh, that is exactly what I wanted to happen. That looks way wicked cool. Oh, that's so cool. I did not expect that to happen quite so easily. Oh, that's what I want to see. Oh, that's cool. Now you notice kind of like one of the things that didn't happen there was it didn't really do the left-right bounce like it normally does in, in Breakout. I gotta think about that one for a bit. Um, okay, now one thing you can see here is I don't have, it's, it doesn't go all the way across. So I gotta, fix that. Um, so I'm just going to add this, make this 1200. 1200. That's a lot more bricks actually than I thought. So I'm going to actually get this to start at around, because I want a gap at the top. So I'm going to say 100. Let's try that see what happens. Okay, that, that's a bit more what breakout looks like when you start the game. Um, and then what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and just kind of make it a little bit more colorful. So i got black, white, green. Uh, let's say red, equals yeah, zero comma zero comma zero and that's not red I'm going to fix that in a second so I'm going to copy that and green and blue we'll do those red because I don't actually know the other colors green and I'll be right green uh, I'll say blue and yeah we'll do that we'll do red and blue for now um, R so that should be 255, GB should be 255. And so what I'm gonna do is when I create a brick, 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 brick class. So self color equals random dot choice. I'm just gonna put all those colors in there. So it's gonna be, we have white bricks, we can have green, we can have red, and we can have blue. We should add yellow and stuff, but that, that's another problem for another day. Um, so I'm gonna need that random module, so import random. And let's see what happens. Okay, there we go. All right, making progress. It's just, it's just, wow, I feel like I'm back in 1980. And yeah, you might want to make the, the bricks a little bit bigger. You might want to make them, you know, so it's as pretty tiny, I guess, but um, I just kind of guesstimated the numbers. And you can see there's no real way of uh, getting rid of the bricks and stuff. I mean, they're, they're just off the screen. They're still actually there. Uh, the objects are still there. I don't know if that's the best way to do it, but um, 
but it is a way to do it. So basically I've just moved them all way off the screen so you can't see them anymore. And then that comes down, boom, and that's going to keep coming down. And Okay, I'm going to just do real quick, just go ahead and throw in the score here. Um, since that's already in here. So in this game, I have this thing where it says render the score. So I got score surface. I don't know what that even means. I'm going to come up here. Yeah, there's a lot There's a lot to pie game that I just don't, never quite really internalized. <laughs> ah, okay, I get it. Okay. All right, copy, and I'm going to paste that over here. So before I flip the display, I'm going to say render the score. And okay, so score is going to be player.score. And, and that should be at width. Again, I'm doing it this way. I'm using the width, so if I just if I just change the screen size like 800 by 400, it would work a little bit differently. Even though I kind of hard coded uh, these numbers in here, so that's something you might want to think about. Um, score surface font render player dot score. The player does not have a score. Let's go ahead and this should be paddle. So self dot score equals zero. So it should be paddle. And when we get a brick, player that score plus equals 10. Okie dokie. Font is not defined. Okay, I gotta define a font apparently. Uh, let's see, where did I do that? Font, font, font. Font, font equals. Mm -hmm. There we go. Okay, so create font. It's gonna go up here before I create my objects. All right, so go ahead and create my font. And let's hope Comic Sans works. Uh, player is not defined. Okay, it is paddle. So I could have called it player, I guess. Okay, there it is. Maybe I can make that font a little bit bigger, but you can see how it's going up every time I'm getting a point, or every time I'm touching one of the boxes, or killing a brick, I should say. And this is, yeah, it's kind of working. Yee. Oh, so I knew that was going to happen, but uh, I'll leave that as it is. I'm not going to lose any sleep over that one. But I would like to see. What happens if it gets into like a a whole little alley of bricks? But you know what? I think I can live with this. Um, the last thing I think I want to add. Actually, I'm going to make that font bigger because that's really tiny. Um, I'm going to make the font 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 font. I'm going to double that. Let's see what it looks like. There we go. That's a little bit better. And it's not very centered, so. It's going to have to be at the width minus probably about I don't know, 25. Let's try that. That's a little bit better. Uh, yeah, I might still want to move that over. Might have to play with the numbers a little bit on that one to get it 50. See, if this is centered, so it's not quite centered. But as the score goes up, it might center itself. And let's do minus 75. Yeah, that was a little bit better. All right, I can live with that. Um, let's see, what else? Sounds. Um, this over here, I do have sounds in here. So what I want to do is I'm going to show you how I do sounds real quick. And I use a website called the Sound Bible. And it's just got a bunch of free sounds. So I'm going to go ahead and search for a bounce. And you can just kind of play and see what you find that you like. So here's one that's called Bounce. No, I don't like that at all. 
Definitely not. Hmm. Bouncy, bouncy, bouncy. Yeah, definitely not that. <laughs> um. We can do that. We'll go with jump. I like that one. So you can see here I can download the wave or the MP3. I tend to download the wave just because it, it usually is a bit more, uh, what do I call it, uh, compatible. So what I gotta do is I gotta make sure that download is in the same folder. So I'm gonna copy that to the same folder as my breakout.py file. Paste. Okay. Now that's really long. I'm just gonna call this bounce.wave. Okay. So, again, taking a look at code that I've done before. So I need to create the sound first. So I'm going to go to, back to my breakout game. And where was that? Create all that stuff at, up here. And go to classes. There we go. Create font. Go ahead and create sounds. And this was, I think, bounce.wave. And then how do we play a sound? Ah, so it's the sound name dot play. So we'll call this bounce sound. And so, uh, so it's gonna play when we touch the paddle. Bounce sound dot play. And when it hits a brick. Okay, I knew that was going to happen. <laughs> All right, now that might get a little annoying. Turn it down a bit. Okay, I can live with that. Um, not the greatest sound. Oh, that was cool. Ooh. Nice. I don't know if that's a bug or if that's a feature, but it kind of works out. Anyway, uh, that is a basic breakout game. I'm going to leave it at that. Um, I'm pretty happy. I wanted to put about an hour into this, and it's been eh, about an hour. Um, you know, except for that stupid thing, getting the uh, paddle to render. It was a pretty straightforward program. And again, you notice how, again, I don't have all this stuff memorized. I had to do some Googling, and I was using some stuff that I created before. It's like a little, you know, it's a kind of a reminder. So there's nothing wrong with doing that. Um, you just got to be able to adapt it. If you understand it well enough to do it in one program, then you can, should be able to understand it well enough to adapt it to another program. Again, I know the code isn't 100% clean and efficient. There's a couple, you know, things that we don't really need. I think we don't need this for the paddle. just needed it for the ball. Um, let me try it and see, make sure that works still. Yeah. Yeah. Again, like if you're if you're more into pat level design, you can make it so that each level has one color. Let's do that. Let's do that because that's kind of how a breakout looks, I think, usually. Because um, that's kind of annoying. Well, I know what I gotta do. Okay. To do that, um, so yeah. So what I gotta do is color equals random choice. Uh, what was it? White. Uh, we don't want black. We want uh, red, green, and blue. I think were the th four colors. And then what we'll do is bricks dot bricks minus one. This will give us the last one that was appended. Dot color equals color. So that should give us all rows of the same color, or not. Invalid color arguments. Uh, bricks, 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 bricks. Oh, the color arguments, what does that even mean? Okay. 
Oh. No, that's not right. Brick. It's not the color of random choice. Ah. Put them in quotation marks. They are not strings. They are actually tuples. RGB tuples. Or tuples. Go ahead and try that one more time. There we go. Now, I think if I had more colors, it would be a little bit better. Uh, but I actually don't know the mixtures, so I don't know. Red and green is yellow, maybe? But anyway, this is a you know, mostly fully functional game. Um, I don't have lives or number of balls or anything included in that. I guess I could do it quick. Um, um, let me do that. Um, let's go ahead and do that quick, just for the heck of it. Um, make it a bit more complete. Now, yeah, I'm going to leave it at that. Uh, I, gotta, I gotta run, sorry. Uh, but anyway, check out, you know, I'll, I'll link the stuff down below about collisions and things like that. Um, there's also, a, I did a video about creating levels that might come in handy uh, with this also. And again, I didn't need to, I don't know if this is the best way of doing it, um, was I, I moved all the bricks off the screen that were bad. Um, it's really not a good way to do it because they're still in that list. And, uh, it's kind of, that can get pretty inefficient um, since it's not going to happen. What we could do to to, uh, to get around that is like you know <clears throat> make a list called dead bricks and then dead bricks dot append brick and then what you would do is once that's over is for brick in dead bricks uh, bricks dot remove brick so that way you've created a secondary list a, a temporary list of dead bricks and then that will actually remove them completely from memory so we really don't even need this part anymore um, it's, it's actually a better way to do it I think um, and you can see how it still works as expected so instead of keeping those bricks in memory and just and rent, I'm still rendering them off screen actually, um, it just you know does it this way. It's a bit more efficient. So yeah, and that way what you could do is then you could say you know if you know length of bricks uh, equals zero, uh, I usually just do less than or equal to zero just in case, but it shouldn't be negative. Then you know print you know game over, you know, game over. You know, blah, 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 do whatever you want to do with the ending screen. Again, I have all, I have all kinds of little videos about how to do these types of little things as well, um, but I'm, I'm not going to go ahead and do it in here. I'm, but I'm happy with, you know, kind of the, the progress uh, this game has made in just one short hour. So enjoy. Um, hopefully, you know, I'll give you a little bit of hints on how to do some pie game stuff. Again, I'm not an expert on it. I'm a turtle guy, as you know. And uh, but it's pretty cool. Uh, I, I'll try and do a little bit more pie game stuff in the future now that I'm getting used to it. But I, I really do need to learn how to do some of their other, you know, like use the, the sprite class that they have, which has which rotates and does a lot of cool things. So, yeah, that's it. Uh, again, thanks everybody for watching. Uh, members, especially for supporting the channel. Subscribers, keep on subscribing. If you haven't subscribed, subscribe below and uh, check out down below for all kinds of links and uh, different things. Thanks for watching. Have a Merry Christmas.